Hi, this is Piero Bonissone and I have the honor today of interviewing a good friend of mine, Jim Bezdek. And hopefully this would be a snapshot of someone who contributed so much to our field as Jim Bezdek has. So on to the questions. What turned me into engineering? When I went to the U.S. Navy, I was 18 years old. I was trained to be an electronics technician repairing radars. And that's how I learned about technology and engineering and so forth. So when I got out of the Navy, I was very interested in engineering. But the chairman of the Civil Engineering Department at the University of Nevada, Reno, told me I would never be able to think for myself. I would always have to follow code books if I was going to be a professional engineer. Well, that wasn't for me. I wanted to do theory, do math. Uh, think a little bit, so I got out of engineering and went into applied math. So your formal, edu formal education is in civil engineering? or uh... My undergraduate degree is in civil engineering, but I eventually left that field. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. So uh, I believe that your first paper was already in fuzzy logic. Am I correct? That's correct. My very first paper was Numerical Taxonomy with Fuzzy Sets, published in 1974. When did you first get involved in computational intelligence? Okay, well, when I was a graduate student in 1971, I believe, Dave Block, one of my thesis advisors, handed me a draft copy of Dude and Hart's seminal book on pattern recognition, said, here, Jim, read this and tell me if there's anything wrong in it. So that was how I got into pattern recognition, and about the same time, uh, someone else handed me Lafayette's 1965 paper and said, I think you'll be interested in this. And of course, that started me thinking about marrying the ideas in Lafayette's paper to the ideas in Dude and Hart's book. Very good. Well, Jim, you're one of our first pioneers. And uh, which uh, major challenge did you face it in your pioneering research? Challenge. The major challenge for everyone in the early days of fuzzy sets was to beat off attacks from the probability gang. <laughs> um, all of us when we were young had this problem. Latvi, of course, was in the forefront. He was the person who was attacked most, but all the rest of us were also attacked. And it was always a challenge to get papers published, to get anybody to take you seriously, to get research grants. So this is not a research challenge, this is a logistics challenge that we had in the early days of fuzzy sets. It's still somewhat of a challenge, I believe, for young people today. You had many contributions. Which is the one that gives you the major satisfaction, greatest satisfaction? Well, I suppose my greatest recognition, of course, has come from my involvement with the fuzzy C-means model and the fuzzy C-means clustering algorithm. Uh, which impact did the existence of society have for you? Could you repeat that? Yes. Which? What's the impact that the society has had on you? impact the societies on me. Yeah, and then... All right, well, my own personal growth, because of the three groups, first there was the Neural Network Council, then the Neural Network Society, and then the CIS, the impact to me was it got me involved in big-time conferences. IEEE is, of course, the biggest prof professional society in the world. It drew all of us in fuzzy sets into having nice transactions, uh, collegial interactions with the INNS, the other big neural network society. All of these things helped me grow personally into uh, probably a much more well-rounded profession. How do you envision the evolution of computational intelligence technologies? It's a tough question, I know. <laughs> well, you know, Piero, my good friend Niels Bohr used to say, to predict is difficult, especially the future. And I'm not a visionary person. I'm a nuts and bolts kind of guy. I like the details. The devil's in the details for me. I, if you asked me in 1991 what it would be like now, 20 years later, I would have been badly, I would have badly underestimated the changes in our life, uh, both technically and in all other ways. There are things happening today that no one would ever imagine could be true 20 years ago. And I'm sure that 20 years from now, the same statement will be true again. I think on the in the near term, uh, our immediate horizon will probably see the onset of evolutionary of um, cloud computing. I think we're going to that's coming whether we want it or not. Wireless sensor networks are going to regulate uh, and possibly spy on all portions of our life. I think that's coming. I think medical imaging and medical computing will become the predominant way 
for the very important healthcare field to evolve. I think the environmental uh, worry we have about the planet will drive a lot of so-called green technologies. Uh, we're, whether we like it or not, we're going to have to be involved with that. And probably social networking, all the aspects of the technology of social networking. Those, those things are all going to happen next five years. And beyond five years, Piero, I just hope I'm alive. <laughs>